when I decided to start putting all of this information on the internet, I searched up rich best friend, that handle was taken. Your rich best friend, that handle was taken. So I landed on Your Rich BFF. I'm Vivian Tu, AKA Your Rich BFF and your favorite Wall Street girly. I'm Brian Walsh, AKA Dr. Money, and I lead financial planning at SoFi. And this is Richer Lives, the show that helps you learn how to use your money to live your best life. We all want more dollar signs on our bank account. But also more fulfillment, satisfaction, and success. So we're here to bring you conversations with inspiring guests. Who've been where you are and are now where you want to be. And we'll provide guidance that aims to get you there step by step. Because everyone deserves the opportunity to live richer your lives. Welcome to our first episode. It's me, Vivian Tu, AKA Your Rich BFF and your favorite former Wall Street girly. And I'm here with my lovely co-host, Brian. Oh, thanks, Viv. I'm Brian Walsh, AKA Dr. Money. I'm a PhD and certified financial planner certificate. I lead advice and planning at SoFi. My job is to help people get their money right. We want you to be rich both on paper and in life. And there's plenty of wealth to go around. And it's our hope that we can help guide you toward making the right decisions to fulfill your money goals. And on that note, I'm a non-client promoter of SoFi Wealth, and everybody you'll hear from today has been compensated by SoFi for their time. Because time's money, right? Exactly. I'm a CFP certificate. I'm also a registered representative with SoFi Securities LLC and an investment advisor representative with SoFi Wealth LLC. Basically, what that means is I can't make any misrepresentations. I kind of have to tell it like it is. Totally. Okay, so we're gonna start every episode with an icebreaker, a thought starter, something to get us warmed up and in the money mindset. So, what is the most extravagant purchase you've ever made that was totally worth it and no, you cannot sell your house? Okay, so hear me out on this one. When both my kids were born, mm -hmm. we hired a sleep consultant. What is that? So, at the end of the day, my wife and I both value our sleep. Like if I don't get seven hours of sleep, the next day I'm super grumpy. <laughs> so what we wanted to do was make sure our kids were sleeping through the night right away and the sleep consultant helped us do that. And it was definitely worth it. Amazing. Now, how about you? Is it as cool as that? Uh, maybe not as cool, but definitely just as valuable to me. Um, my first year in New York, after I'd had my big girl job, I saved up all of my money and I bought a black leather Prada bag and it was the most money I'd ever spent on anything in my entire life. And I had to give my blood, sweat and tears to earn that bag. And it was less so actually about the purse, but more so about what it represented, that I was able to use my money to do something that I wanted and no one could tell me no. And it just felt really, really awesome to know that I'd earned it and no one had gotten it for me. That's amazing. Totally. And by the way, before we get into the really fun stuff, let's learn more about SoFi really quick. One of the most difficult parts of finances for many people is just keeping track of it all. Your bank account, student loans, 401ks, investing accounts, the list just goes on and on and on. And they're all in different places and there's no rhyme or reason why. You're right, it's chaotic. There are so many people that I've talked to that have even lost track of a retirement account. Let's face it, we don't keep track of our expenses anymore using the good old fashioned checkbook. So why not have all of our finances all in one spot? It's time to have one place to turn for all of your finances. It's time to move to SoFi, the all-in-one app for your money. You can bank, borrow, and invest all in the same place. Download the app and get started today by visiting SoFi.com slash richer lives. So anyways, now that we got warmed up a little bit, let's move on to the topic of richness. Usually we'll have guests who share their stories of where they've been and how they got to where they are now, the challenge they faced along the way and what's gonna be ahead for them. But today, our celebrity guest is our very own Rich BFF, Vivian Tu. I'm so excited to share my story as the daughter of immigrants. I didn't see a lot of people who look like me being represented in the finance industry. So I'm on a mission to change that, which is why I'm here. It's so cool to sit down and talk with someone who's just as passionate about money as I am. There's tons of people that wanna learn about personal finances. So I'm really excited for us to go through the questions and see what we can learn along the way. Bring it, Brian, no softballs. You got it. So your name, your rich BFF. I gotta ask. What does rich mean to you? And do you feel like you're rich? Yeah, so back in the day, I feel like my perception of rich was the same as most people's in that I wanted to be able to walk into a designer store and buy out every single bag or drive a Lambo and you know more traditional indicators of wealth. But 
These days, I would actually say being rich to me is all about being able to have freedom of choice. And that's something as silly as me coming out of the subway and it's pouring rain and I just got a blowout and I can afford to buy that $10 umbrella from the street hawker or get into an Uber without worrying about whether or not my credit card is going to decline or worrying about whether or not I have that money in my bank account. All the way to something as serious as having the money to leave a job and a manager who doesn't respect me or to leave a relationship where my partner isn't respectful of me. And just having the money and freedom to do that gives me a lot of agency. So I would say, yes, I do feel very rich and very lucky. That's amazing. And that freedom, that optionality, I know it's important to a lot of people we talk to. So I guess it brings me to the next question then. When do you feel like you made it? or you became rich? In terms of when I started feeling rich as a creator, probably, this is gonna sound really shallow, but when I finally got that blue tick verification on Instagram, this was before the time of being able to spend $14 a month and just buy a blue check, but it actually took a lot of work to get verified on Instagram. I had to have a ton of press, I had to be Googleable, I had to be notable, and I had been declined for the blue check so many times. When I finally ended up getting it, it really felt like I had made it and I had really advanced both the Your Rich BFF brand, but also myself as a creator. So we're talking about where you at, you're at right now, mm -hmm. you know, when you made it. But like, let's face it, I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't an overnight success story where all of a sudden you're, no. you know, you're <laughs> rich. I'd love to take a step back and think about, okay, what made you start Your Rich BFF and even start, you know, posting content on social media in general? Yeah, it was all just one big joke. I wish I could tell you that I had this mastermind plan to build this brand, but honestly, it was just because my friends wouldn't stop bothering me about it. Um, mostly it was my work colleagues who would ask me questions like, hey, what am I buying in my 401k? How do I even set it up? Which health insurance plan did you pick? And all of my girlfriends from school all decided to go into higher education, whether that be medical school, law school, business school, and so when I would take them out, I would cover dinner or I'd cover coffee and they would say, oh, we're so lucky to have a rich best friend. So when I decided to start putting all of this information on the internet, I searched up rich best friend, that handle was taken, your rich best friend, that handle was taken. So I landed on your rich BFF as a default. You know, I think one of the things that, that resonates with me when I, when I look at your content is, is really your ability and I guess the perspective that you have into all different types of people, the challenges they face and the obstacles that they have to overcome. I guess, where does that come from? Is that natural or is that something that you're conscious about for every single video? Yeah, I think when you have a large audience, you do have to be really mindful that you are catering to all of them. And in particular, I would say, I really focus on creating finance content for people who haven't had that in the past. Um, I'm certainly a young woman. I'm a woman of color. Um, you know, I want my content to cater to women, POC, and people who felt marginalized in the past, whether that be part of the low income community or part of the LGBTQ community. It's really important to me to create content for people who've never seen finances cater to them. I love it. And I think, you know, on a similar note, looking at your content over, you know, over the course of time, the thing I respect the most is you're able to balance solid insights while being entertaining. And it, it, like, honestly, as a financial planning nerd, the insights, I'm like, okay, that's gotta be there. But it's also gotta be entertaining. How do you kind of balance that with money's a serious topic and really kind of make that work in your style and your approach and, and putting out content? So what I'm hearing is that you think I'm funny. I do think you're funny, <laughs> but, and, and also I think you're smart. I mean, the, the insights are solid too. I think when I was personally looking for finance information for myself, when I was trying to educate and learn more, it was all so boring, it was all so dry. And when I started creating content, I really thought about my friends in mind and how short their attention spans are and how they needed things explained in a certain way. And so now if I'm able to explain something a financial concept as it relates to buying different pairs of shoes and the different colors and sizes or building the perfect charcuterie board and having, you know, a bunch of different types of investments all the way to just using a movie plot to explain a financial concept. I think people are a lot more inclined to actually pay attention than if it's the boring jargon that they're already seeing on TV. People were actually paying attention. And for once I was getting comments that said, this is the first time 
in my 20, 30, 40 years of life that this has been explained to me in a way that I actually understood it. So it became very clear to me that if I wanted people to actually pay attention to my finance content, I had to make it fun. What do you think is like the biggest thing holding people back right now from getting their money right and ultimately, I guess, leading a, a richer life? You know, I think it's almost paralysis by analysis. It's not hard in theory to find information about finance. You go to Google, you do a quick search, you can find just about anything but it's hard to find the right information. There's probably a gazillion hits. You don't know which link to click on. And if you don't have that education, you're not sure what information is good and bad. And then once you finally do find that information, they're always saying like, you can choose any of these number of options and then you have to weigh which one works the best for you. And when people are given so many choices, they just freeze up and they choose not to do anything because they're comfortable with the current status quo. So my advice isn't, you know, do so much due diligence that you're not doing anything at all. It's do your research, make a smart, educated decision, but don't belabor any one decision for years on end to the point where you're actually missing out on any sort of investing or a higher yield savings account or anything that could really benefit your financial goals right now. Gotcha. So it's basically like information's everywhere, yep. figuring out what to do, and I guess the idea of like, don't let perfection be the enemy of progress, Correct. more or less. Exactly. So what's your biggest concern right now when you think about people's finances? Like taking a step back, looking like systemically at everything mm -hmm. that's going on in the world and how it affects people's day in and day out finances. Or people making over $100,000 or more every single year are living paycheck to paycheck right now. I think a lot of people are feeling economically uncertain. We've seen the headlines about layoffs. People want to be sure that their job is going to be able to keep funding their expenses. And to that point, I think a lot of people are concerned about the cost of living. So obviously things like rent and groceries and everything have gotten more and more expensive. And people who are making those higher incomes are starting to realize that they're living closer to paycheck to paycheck. And there are certainly lots of great tips that we will be sharing on this series about how to make the most of your money, how to make sure that you are getting money in ways that you could easily do in the next 30 seconds. And it doesn't have to be this painful, laborious thing where you pick up a second job. But I do think people are really worried about where that money is going to come from to really pay for their everyday expenses. Looking ahead from here, what's an ambition of yours that you'd really like to kind of go after next? You know, not to mention my podcast or my book that launches December 26th called Rich AF. You can pre-order at richaf.me. I actually really want to take a moment to focus on my own financial goals. I am planning for an upcoming wedding. I'm getting married next year. And I hate to be the one to say it, wedding planning is a nightmare. It is an absolute nightmare. And I want to be able to balance both my career and building out my brand while also prioritizing my personal life and saving up and focusing on how I'm going to throw the best wedding of the century without breaking the bank. That sounds like a fantastic uh, goal as someone who's gotten married before. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we had it on a Friday. It makes it cheaper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So whatever you want to do. My email address, you could send the e-invite there. Yeah. I'm assuming it's an open bar. Yeah, We're good. It will be an open bar. <laughs> All right. Hopefully sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what's the inspiration for your content? You know, I would love to say that social media is a renewable resource. So when I create a piece of content just because I'm passionate about it or because there was a news article about it, I will then get hundreds, if not thousands of comments, many of which end up being questions. So then I just go into the comments, I find a question that I'd like to answer, and I answer it in the next video. And then with that video, there are another hundred, another thousand comments, and I go find a question that I want to answer. And so I am very fortunate that it really does feel like every single video fuels the next video. Gotcha. So it's like real life user research and feedback. Exactly. A great feedback loop. Amazing. If you follow me on social, you've heard me talk about this so many times, but it's really important. We all have ambitions and financial goals that we want to achieve, and saving towards those goals is part of making them a reality. But if you're still keeping your savings in a traditional savings account, or even worse, in a checking account, it's time to do the ambitious thing and open up a SoFi checking and savings account. When you set up direct deposit, you'll unlock their most competitive APY on your savings. 
When we filmed this episode, it was up to 4.40%, which is exponentially higher than the national average for savings accounts. There are so many features to SoFi Checking and Savings that make it a bank account you can love. There are no account fees, plus no fee overdraft coverage, so you don't have to worry about accidentally overspending. And as if that wasn't enough, you can access up to $2 million in FDIC insurance on deposits through a seamless network of participating banks. It's time to take saving toward your goal seriously, so open up a SoFi Checking and Savings account. Go to SoFi.com slash Richer Lives to get started. Okay, so we heard your story. Now it's time to play a little game, Fun Money. Today's topic is billionaires. Oh my gosh, don't get me started. I could talk about billionaires all day. I really don't think billionaires should even exist. Shots fired. Yeah, it's a little bit of a spicy take, but like, let me just rephrase. So I think billionaires typically get their money from what I would call likely unethical means. And certainly, I think people do deserve to make money, but when you get to a net worth of a billion dollars, there's a little bit of hoarding happening there. And I think that money could be put to use in a lot of better ways. So personally, I just don't think that billionaires should be allowed to just keep this money, continue to profit off of exploitative labor, and then not really contribute back to society. Okay, so this will be a fun game then. Yeah. I'll throw out a handful of billionaires, approximate like how much money they have, yeah. and then we'll go through like a hypothetical scenario. Like, okay, what would you do to spread out their money to like potentially put it to different mm. uses, let's say? Okay, I love this. This is okay. gonna be a good game. And if you wanna throw it all my way, that's totally cool too. Right, okay. But the, go the, ahead. The, the doctor money fund. Okay, exactly. So we'll start with the first one Elon Musk, mm -hmm. Mr. Electric Vehicle himself. Mm -hmm. What's he got? Like $200 billion? Yeah. So what are you doing with $200 billion? So I'd actually love to take a page out of Mr. Musk's book and focus on renewable energy and helping to slow global warming. Um, obviously, I'm not sure if you've been to the beach recently, there has been quite a lot of litter and pollution in our water bodies, in our oceans. And what I'd love to do is use some of that money to create a company that can help use technology to turn some of that sea trash, we've seen these literal floating barriers of trash, and turn that into renewable energy. Not only is that gonna help us limit the amount of trash in our oceans, but also going to help create energy that doesn't rely on fossil fuels. Nice. Okay, that sounds like a powerful idea. Mm -hmm. You get it? <laughs> Gosh, that's such a dad joke. I mean, those are all I have. Yeah. What, do you, what do you want me to do, okay? <laughs> all right, so next up, we'll go with uh, Jeff Bezos. So even after his divorce, what's he mm -hmm. got? Like $150 mm -hmm. billion, dollars, something like that. What are you doing there? Yeah, so I think Mr. Bezos has one of the most powerful distribution networks on the, I would say the most powerful distribution network on the planet. And what would be really cool to see is leveraging that distribution network to actually bring food and pharmaceuticals to areas where we have food deserts and pharmaceutical deserts. So there are actually people who live in areas where the nearest grocery store is 100 miles away, or there is one doctor serving four different counties. And you know, there's one drugstore serving all of those counties. And it's really, really hard to get access to fresh fruit and produce and very hard to access the medication that could be life-saving or completely necessary to someone's health. And by using that distribution network, we're gonna actually be able to mail people what they need to be healthy and wealthy. Nice. Okay, that seems pretty fitting because it's mm -hmm. right in his bread and butter. Totally. <laughs> okay, time for the last <laughs> oh, one. Oh gosh, I just I know, that. I, I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on dropping these. Everyone's gonna tune in every week to hear new dad jokes. It's gonna be great. great. <laughs> okay, so last up on the list is gonna be Larry Ellison. Okay. So what, we're talking about $130 billion. Mm -hmm. It's your turn to be the Oracle. Yeah. What are you doing here? So obviously Larry Ellison is the software king and a lot of the software that he creates actually works with companies who are looking to train or educate new employees, working on those backend systems to make everyday corporate life easier. And what we can actually use those systems for is actually to make education more readily accessible digitally to a lot of people who may not necessarily be getting education in some very important topics like personal finance in schools. Uh -huh. And in particular, we could serve some underserved communities. I mean, financial education, I mean, that's way I my mean, heart right there. That is, that is our bread and butter to play off of your joke. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> okay, so it sounds like we've done our part here to help everyone lead a richer life. So totally. I want to congratulate you. Great answers. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. So obviously this game is really, really boiling things down. Very simple. Certainly, you know, all of this money could be used for a one-time cause. But I actually think that this game is very smart because this wealth is so large, it'd actually be smarter to start a new company that is able to help make gradual and progressive change over time. I completely agree. And then I would actually also set aside a small amount of that money for us. Oh, for us? My kids gotta go to college somehow. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they've got more than enough for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Is that it for our first episode? That's it. I can't wait to do more and for everyone to see what we're talking about and more importantly, who we're going to be speaking with. Why don't we give everyone a little preview right now? Okay, it's gonna be so good. Today, we're welcoming Karamo. Well, I'm in my talk my era, just to mm. let you know right now. We didn't grow up with money, we grew up poor. When like your car is being towed <laughs> and your mama's calling you <laughs> and Sally Mae's calling you. And so now I do consider myself rich because I've worked my butt off and I'm gonna talk about it and mm -hmm. I'm gonna share it. That is right, corporate Natalie is here today. I love this, I love spending money. I'm really good at spending it. <laughs> I think the idea that women having money is unattractive. Who thinks that? I think men have a little like issue with, no. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not you at all. As you can tell, there is some serious tea that is going to be spilled on future episodes of Richer Lives. Let us know in the comments who you want to see us interview about their money. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified of future episodes. You can also find SoFi on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, on your phone. You know, something that I want to come back to as we end our first episode is just how important it is to seek out the people who can support you in reaching your financial goals. DIY is great for craft projects, but when it comes to your money, it's really important to get some guidance. That's exactly why we offer complimentary financial planning to every SoFi member. The journey toward a richer life is different for each and every one of us. And that's why it's so helpful to have someone point you in the right direction. A lot of people get confused about what a financial planner does. So here's the TLDR. A financial planner is kind of like a therapist, but for your finances. They help you make the right decisions with your finances so you can reach your ambitions. And our team of financial planners at SoFi are all fiduciaries, which means that they have to act in your best interest. They're not there to sell you anything or manage your investments, anything like that. Basically, they're there to help you make the right decisions. That's awesome because there's so much untrustworthy information across the internet and knowing that you're actually getting guidance from a financial planner will help you avoid a lot of those traps that you see online. Exactly. If you're ready to start your journey, first sign up for SoFi like I mentioned earlier, then go to SoFi.com slash no cost financial planning to set up your own appointment with one of the SoFi financial planners. You can also set up an appointment right in the SoFi app. All right, I think that is a wrap on episode one, y'all. Hi again, it's me, Brian Walsh, aka Dr. Money, here to talk about some of the legal stuff. Though I am a certified financial planner certificate, your finances are unique. That means anything I talked about today shouldn't be considered advice. Think about it more as high level education or guidance. So if I can't guarantee any future performance and past performance isn't guaranteed either. Our automated investing and financial planning are advisory services offered through SoFi Wealth, LLC. Active investing is a brokerage service offered through SoFi Securities, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC. Also, please subscribe to our channel. And of course, on your phone, right here. What, you can't? Just say on your phone. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I was just gonna hold my hand out there and it would just appear. I bet when Bradley Cooper holds his hand out on set, a phone appears, you know? Uh. <laughs> we made the same sigh. <laughs> That's a little bit awkward.